Hey, Carrie. What's up, Rip Esselstyn, back from plant stock. You're just a, you're like a pinball machine. You just like, you just get pinballed from one event to another <laughs> and always with a smile. I'm, I am uh -huh. utterly uh -huh. impressed every time, every uh -huh. time. Well, thank you. You're hey, welcome. everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's Friday. Can you believe it's Friday, September 29th? Carrie, where does the where do the days go? You know, I <laughs> I don't I don't know. I you know, I am I am utterly shocked at how quickly this year has has gone, um, and and how much we we just like we just we're blowing and going so much all of us that we we often just forget to stop and take a little bit of time to just sort of breathe in and, and give thanks and have some gratitude. And, um, you know, last night my, I'm still in Oregon for a couple of weeks and my mother-in-law is in town visiting. And we went to an observatory last night with telescopes and things. And we, yeah. we watched this like 20 minute lecture on moons and all the different moons. And, you know, we, we have our moon, but all of these other planets in our solar system have hundreds of their own moons things I didn't know. And then we were invited to, it was a bit of a cloudy night, but we were invited to go outside to their observatory and just look at the stars and the moon. And I was like, why don't we do this every night? Just stop and give thanks. Well, and just look you know at the what? moon. That's, that's wonder <clears throat> well, absolutely wonderful. And it's funny because today my wife and the, our whole family, we're going to go to Barton Springs and we're going to watch the full moon tonight yes. and this morning i was at swim practice and i was as i was getting into the water i looked out on the horizon and the the full moon was so incredibly low low to the in the horizon wonderfully orange and so and wonderfully spectacular and i was just like this is like so absolutely the wonderment that i yes. felt felt this morning and i hope i'm going to feel tonight is just just by looking at a full moon right Yes. And, and I was listening to a podcast. There's a famous, she's a meditation teacher, uh, very famous. I'm sure many of us have heard of her. Her name is Tara Brock. And uh, I listen to her podcast every now and then. And it, it actually helps me go to sleep at night. Uh, her voice, the cadence of her voice is just so beautiful and it lulls me to sleep. But she talks about that, about one of the things is um, savoring something. So we look at the moon every day and we're like, wow, that's pretty cool. That's amazing. But what, you know, what she invites us to do is spend an extra 15 to 30 seconds and just savor that moment, savor it. And I think about this in everything that we do. I am a ridiculously fast eater, Rip, like I shovel. And I think a lot of us are guilty. I, I, I mean, like if we can get some heck yeah, kale yes in the, uh, in the chat about that, you know, we're eating on the go. We're just, we're in our car some days. And um, what I've really tried to, incorporate into my life is just taking some of that 15 to 30 seconds of savoring and just like savor this food that we're about to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes a long way to just go, yeah, this is, <laughs> we're so lucky. Well, speaking of chewing your food, um, I'd love to see in the chat, how many of you um, joined us for our plant stock this last weekend? Um, you know, we had, just, yeah, we had Justine. yeah, we had close to 2,500 people and as everybody knows, a lot of Brock stars there. But one of the things, and I'm, I've been told it several times over the course of the last 30 plus years of my life. And it's always a constant, it's a nice reminder. And I think Desiree Nielsen, who was our registered dietitian from Canada, she wrote a book called Good for Your Gut. And she reiterated it. And that is how important it is for us to chew our food. Like, take your time, chew your food. The digestive process starts in our mouth. And let's not just take wolf down big chunks of food. We really want to make it as close to a almost liquid form as we can. And I am so guilty of not, not doing that. But it's something that I'm going to strive for. Yes, I am so guilty of that. What were... You know, some of the other takeaways from from last weekend and we have been getting some emails and some uh, from folks that have asked if the replays are available. 
Uh, and they, at this time, those replays are not available for sale. However, RIP often does web like webinars and we bundle them up with some of our food products. So be on the lookout for some upcoming bundles of food products where we will then go ahead and bundle those three days worth of videos in it. So um, yeah, it is not, the replays are not officially for sale. One of my big takeaways from Dr. Gregor's keynote, well, yep. there were many from Dr. Gregor because he is a fire hose. Well, and, and if anybody doesn't know, you know, he, he has this new book, How Not to Age, that's coming out December 4th. And um, we were lucky enough to get him to give us basically a, a nice little preview of, of his book and some of the amazing things that it, that it entails. And Carrie, I, I know I'm cutting in right now and I want yeah. you to jump in, but in How Not to Die, not this one, but How Not to Die, here it is right here, How Not to Die. You should see this library in Rip's office. How Not to Die, he's got, 2000 citations that he references and how not to diet where it's, you know, he talks about the whole diet industry. He's got 4,000 citations. And if you look at this book, literally the last, this much of it is just citations, right? <laughs> I think he said over 13,000. Oh, oh, you stole my, you stole my thunder there. <laughs> so, so in how not to age, he said there's 13,000 different citations and it would be, it would have been as long as this book when the publishing house was like, that's not going to fly. So he's going to have a QR code where you can go and it will take you to a website that has every one of those. If you want to explore them deeper. Yeah. His, his keynote was about 30, 40 minutes long and he did the whole thing on a walking treadmill. That was another takeaway was like, we all just need to get a little walking treadmill. Uh, so, <laughs> but it was constant um, science references. So the whole time on the screen, anytime he would say a sentence, there would be a scientific study that would back up what he was saying. And, and with how not to age, I feel like some of the simplest takeaways from that yeah. were hydration was was a big one um to me it was protecting yourself from the sun uh he showed an image of it was a truck driver it was a male truck driver and showed an image of like the half of his face that's exposed to the sun in his truck was uh remarkably different than the side of his face that's protected from the sun um so he did talk a lot about that he talked um he talked a lot about Beans. <laughs> I mean, do we need to hear more about beans? But well, yeah, it's it's well, the magic food. Well, and also to me, he spoke a lot about kind of okay. Let's say we get to live to 110, right? So we have a good longevity, but what's our health span like? So he gave us just a lot of stuff about what we can do in our lives to help increase our health span. So the number of years that we are living and thriving and we're, and we're, you know, doing things that we love as opposed to, you know, being having dementia or Alzheimer's or, you know, being confined to a wheelchair and your quality of your life is just not where, it, where we, anyone would want it to be. And he said that like gerontologists forever have been arguing about, you know, do people die from, uh, old age or do they die from disease? And that to me was a question too, that he addressed, uh, during his, during his hour long lecture as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. another quote that he said that uh, again, my, literally my mother-in-law right, wrote this down on my laptop, knowing that we were going to do this today. Uh, and it was a quote that he says, uh, diet can trump cholesterol. And, I think that your father has spoken about this before, Rip, about people, you know, obviously we have a vested interest in our cholesterol numbers. They do hold a lot of weight uh, in, in health outcomes. But I know your father has spoken to, to this where some people just have stubborn cholesterol. You know, it's just I, I've been plant based, uh, whole food plant based for over 15 years and I will I will never have 
cholesterol that's in the 130s. I just, I have tried and, uh, and it just doesn't work. But I think what your dad says, and I think what Gregor was saying is like, we just have to make ourselves an endothelial fortress. Right. And so keep putting those things into your mouth that are going to protect. And those things being the leafy greens, the balsamics, the, you know, six times a day, things like that, that, and the beans that are going to just create a fortress and without being always fixated on just what that number is. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great reminder, Carrie, for people that maybe tend to want to, uh, perseverate and obsess over their, their numbers. Um, and my father has made this very, very clear. The most important thing at the end of the day is what are you putting into your mouth for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And if it's rice and greens and steel cut oats and sweet potatoes and your cholesterol is at 185 at the end of the day, it's not under 150. That's fine. Each, each and every one of us has a different set point. But what I will say, Carrie, is that typically, because I've seen literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people's blood work since I've been doing this since 2010, and almost everyone, regardless of your genetic predisposition, yes, there's people with familial hypercholesterolemia. They are, there's about 1% of us that fall into that category and you will have a total cholesterol that's like in the three, four, five, six hundreds. You are an anomaly and this does not apply to you. But almost everybody else, if you eat this way, typically you'll get that cholesterol down near 200 and well below 200. But there's certain people like typically women that have HDLs that are 80, 90, 100. And if you have an HDL that high, you're not getting your total cholesterol down below 175 or 150 or maybe even 200. And, th and that's nothing that you should, you shouldn't sweat over that. Yes. My, my HDL is uh, consistently 95 to 106. Wow. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's, it's, that that is why my total will never, will never be low. Um, once again, my mother-in-law, she's, she has a dear friend who's in her eighties, I believe, who decided to go on the, you know, a, a plant strong diet. She went in April and sent me the results of her blood work <laughs> from that she just had recently uh, on September 7th. So from April to September 7th, her total went from 226 to 178, um, which is great. She had uh, 109 HDL and it's now, let's see, where is it? 98. So her HDL is still, still quite yeah. high. Um, but her doctor, what I really wanted to point out is uh, her doctor wrote a little note on the side of her chart that said, hi, Barbara, your cholesterol levels all look really good. No need for medication. Continue your plant-based diet. It is working very well. So tell me, what were her, what was, do you have her uh, LDL, HDL, and triglycerides there as well? Yeah. So her HDL was 109 and then went down to 98. So still, yeah. still remarkably high. Her triglycerides were 64 and went to 68. So not, yeah. not much of a change there. Her, here we go. Her LDL went from 102 to 66. So, so that, that, that is what I was looking for because I knew something spectacular ha probably happened with her LDL. And I want everybody to know too, that when your HDL, when you do this, when you go whole food plant-based, your LDL usually drops like hers did, you know, a good 15, 20, 25%. Your HDL, which is the healthy, the good cholesterol, also typically drops, and it typically drops 10%, mm. right? And the reason I want to make it very clear why that happens is because as you're cleaning up your internal kitchen, right? You're getting rid of all the bad, taking in pre pretty much just the good. You get to fire, get rid of some of these HDL mopper uppers because frankly, you don't need them anymore. You don't need to keep paying them because you got a clean kitchen. And so, and the ones that you keep, 
become bigger, more efficient HDL mopper uppers. So your uh, was it your aunt? Uh, it is my. It's a friend of my mother-in-law's. Right. Friend of your mother's went from 109 to I think you said 98. That's yeah. almost 10 percent exactly. And now those 98 that, that she has are going to be like really like muscling in and doing their job in a great way. So a lot of times you'll go to your cardiologist. You'll be doing this. Everything's dropping nicely. Your HDL goes from 42 to 32 or 35. And your cardi cardiologist says, oh, I'm a little concerned about that HDL drop in, but know that that's exactly what should be happening. And typically your cardiologist or your family practitioner doesn't see people do this with diet. And so they don't, they don't know that this is exactly as it should be. And if you look at the the rural Chinese or the Papa Highlanders of New Guinea, you'll see that they have a total cholesterol typically 80, 90, or 100, and their HDLs are in the teens or the low 20s. Wow. Right? Wow. wow. So it, yeah. it's all about perspective and what's that total, and then your fractions are, 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 are based on that. And let me just finish this, Carrie, by saying that for people that are wondering, how do you achieve total cholesterol? Because most people think it's HDL plus LDL, and that's not how it is. It's your HDL plus your LDL plus one fifth your triglycerides. Mm -hmm. And those, what it really affects those triglycerides is how much, how many sweets are we consuming? How many refined, refined and processed foods are we doing? Refined grains, jams. You know what does a real number on triglycerides? alcohol. If you're doing a lot of smoothies or juices, right, that will greatly affect triglycerides, which also affect your total cholesterol. Mm. Yeah. And I can tell you when I know I've got my, uh, uh, my annual appointment each year to get my blood drawn, I can tell you, I am a very, very uh, particular eater that week before. Like oh, I am nice. not putting anything through my lips that might contribute to a growth in triglycerides. So yeah, I, I uh, definitely pay more attention the week or two before uh, what I'm putting in my mouth. Um, and I know that time is limited for you, Rip, today because your daughter is is swimming in a swim meet uh, yeah. that you can't miss. And so I don't. I want to be mindful of of yeah. your time here. And you know, as we're shooting the kale today, uh, just kind of getting caught up because you know I I produce your podcast every week and. We do all of these live things and sometimes we just never even get a chance to get caught up. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, really celebrate the success of plant stock and some of those key takeaways. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to really talk about and let people let me, know is, before, yeah. Before you yeah. do that, if you're going to yeah. talk about the Plant Strong movie, before you do, yes. I do want to say that, you know, there were, there are so many incredible chefs that are out there and we really were highlighting the chefs at this year's plant stock, people like Cameron Clements, the plant-based Cajun, um, who I've had on the podcast, who's just, she's adorable. She's got so much just pep in her step and she's fantastic. And I found her because of Dan Butner and his, his book, The American Kitchen, because he found her and decided to have her in his book when he was highlighting different parts of America that actually used to eat whole food plant-based, right? Yes. And so in many ways, yes. it is authentic to this country to eat this way. Everybody knows about Carly Bodrug. Uh, mm -hmm. She had a very exciting announcement on Wednesday of this week that she's introducing her new book, The uh, Plant Use Scrappy Cookbook. I can't you know, wait. I can't wait. Jackie Ackerberg, uh, Jack Fruitful, um, so mission aligned in her message and, and all of her recipes. Yeah. Kiki Nelson, what a great story, how she lost 70 pounds and has been able to keep it off for well over three and a half, four years by doing exactly what we prescribe here at Plant Strong. And I already mentioned Desiree Nielsen, right? The uh, Good For Your Gut RD yeah. from Canada. Um, and then, of course, Anne and Jane. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, anyway, the list goes on. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff AJ. I mean, it was, it was incredible. <laughs> but we also had the we had the debut of the Plant Bros, and these just so everybody knows, this was a, a duo 
my my brother-in-law and then um another good friend john fitzgerald who's been on the event side of the business for five years uh and they were the plant bros and basically the gist is everything is better in the kitchen when you have more <laughs> tools more equipment and preferably power tools and it was it was it, it, it was something that should have been on saturday night live they were they were phenomenal. They were apps. They stole the show. Really, I mean, finally somebody upstaged Ann Esselstyn. It's about time, right? Now, um, I you know, getting back to those younger, the younger up and coming Brock stars. I the point that I took away from that, and the high point was that the future looks bright for us in the plant based world. Uh, these are the people that are uh, standing on your shoulders, Rip, and your contemporary shoulders, and we're all coming at this from a different perspective. So the Esselstyns uh, and a lot of the Esselstyn followers are always coming at it from health, 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 health. How can I either uh, react to a bad health diagnosis or how can I be proactive against a bad health diagnosis? Um, but some of these other younger chefs are coming at it from the social aspect. And so they are concerned about climate change. They are concerned about uh, animal agriculture. And I, I think we need to celebrate all of that because regardless of where your interests lie, when you're coming into a plant strong diet, regardless of where they lie, like our, in, our purpose is to get more people to eat plants. At the end of the day, that is the that is the goal. So, um, so yeah, I would really for those of you that are you know like you love your Esselstyns, you love your Ornishes and your McDougals, really seek out some of these new up and coming chefs and see what you can learn from them because really like <laughs> we'll be looking to them in the next ten to fifteen years for sure. Very very much yeah thanks Carrie, and I know where you were going and then I cut you off to talk That's a little okay. bit about plant stock and that is so we just launched last week the plant strong well plant strong the, the plant strong legacy and yeah. you can go to plantstrongmovie.com to watch it it's a 24 minute documentary and about 12 years ago i went into this small town in usa to try and get as many people as i could to embark on the engine 2 28 day challenge my my first book had just launched and the call to action in that book was give yourself 28 days to test drive this lifestyle. And then you decide going forward how much or how little you want to um, engage going forward. And I went and I was, you know, I went to factories. I went to high schools. I went to churches. I went to bars. I went to banks and it was so and when I decided to do this 12 years ago, I asked a film crew to come with me. So we have it all on film. And we literally had hundreds of hours of footage from this, this uh, adventure <laughs> that I went on in, in Mercersburg. And so we, there was, it was so, it was just daunting. And so the filmmaker that took, that took all the video was like, I don't know where to start. And finally he started with the help of his son and now we have something to share with you all. And so it's really the, it's the before and after, after the after. And <laughs> we go back and we, we look at people that did this 12 years ago and are they still engaged in doing this lifestyle? And it was so much fun to yeah. put this together and get it out there. And, um, you know, what else do you have to say about that, Carrie? Anything? Yeah, well, a few things. I think that it is, a, because you said it's a 24-minute film and it is free for viewing, um, I, I think it's a great refresher for any of us who have been at this for a long time. And sometimes we need a little more inspo in our lives. We need a little more inspiration to like, you know, kick it back in gear. Uh, so it's a really digestible, pun intended, 24-minute uh, film. I also think that we have we have set up the website, plantstrongmovie.com, to be a resource for you now to take it to your communities, share it amongst your communities. 
your church groups, uh, your families, anyone who expresses an interest uh, in this lifestyle and show them that film because on that website, there are also uh, a way for you to get the challenge, the actual challenge that yeah. uh, that Rip did 12 years ago with these people, Rip and Dr. Liz. And, and so you can replicate the whole thing. There are resources such as recipes on there, um, uh, some links to our food, chant, a way to become uh, an affiliate uh, of Plant Strong Foods is on there. So if you're interested in sharing the good news about plantstrongfoods.com, you can become an affiliate. That is on there. Um, and then just this week, in conjunction with the film coming out, we released a podcast episode where just last week you caught up with the filmmaker, Jeff Nelson, and Dr. Elizabeth George, who was the impetus for this whole thing. She was the one that invited you to come uh, humiliate yourself in front of uh, a town that wasn't totally receptive at first. Yeah, no, the way it whole be all began in, in complete transparency is I got this phone call from this doctor in Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. And I did know about Mercersburg because I actually went to the Mercersburg Academy for my last two years of high school. And so she called and she said, listen, you know, I was introduced to your book, The Engine 2 Diet. Would you ever, ever entertain coming back to Mercersburg and let's make a let's make a blueprint in small town America as far as what healthy can look like. And she's a great she was very persuasive. And so that's exactly what we did. And it's a lot of fun. Carrie, I need to go in a, in a couple minutes. So Guys, I got to give a shameless plug. I got to give a shameless plug to our next live retreat. It's in Sedona, Arizona. It is October 9th to the 14th. It's right around the corner. I know it's absolutely last minute. We have four spots available. And I, I so want four of you to come that I want you to email us at hello at PlantStrong dot com. And then I want to give you a discount to help really um, whet your appetite and make this that much more appealing. So mm -hmm. it is it will it is one of the most life changing, transformative experiences that any human being can gift themselves with. And I urge you, urge you if 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 now's a good time, if you can break away for um, for five days, six days, um make it happen it will be it's october 9th through the 15th yes it yeah. is so we start yeah. on a we start on a monday and we end on a saturday yes yep. and it's yeah and sedona so if you're in the if you're on that side of the country and airline travel is a factor i would strongly consider it for sure um and there are you can get to phoenix very quickly a lot so many direct flights into phoenix so Travel shouldn't be a nightmare. <laughs> and, and thank you, Carrie, and, and everybody. Thanks for indulging me with that. And then B, I can't even imagine what the food is like in a, in a nursing home. Um, you're right. It would be great to see some health, uh, some food uh, changes in these establishments. So we got to start asking. So B, next time you're there, start, you know, try and do your part to ask and see what, what would be involved in in uh, substituting, <laughs> getting him steel cut oats instead of eggs and bacon and getting him a rice and beans extravaganza instead of, you know, a ham and cheese sandwich for lunch, little things like that. And it's less expensive. It's less expensive. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, with that, I got to go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to let my daughter down. Everybody appreciate you guys being around uh on this friday week. our last friday in september carrie appreciate you and appreciate uh, everybody keep it plan strong we'll see you next time Bam. boom <laughs> all right take care everyone yeah good luck